Computer Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2015, brought to you by Mirantis. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Brick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley. This is Silicon Angle Media's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract a signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Frick, here at the Computer History Museum. We have, for the first time on The Cube, as an IBMer, Monty Taylor, who's now Director of OpenStack Innovation at IBM, formerly of HP, been on the board of directors for the OpenStack Foundation, technologist, great guy, CUBE alumni, again, formerly with HP. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. As thank an you, IBMer, and also we have all the IBM events, Insight coming up, and yeah. obviously we do a lot of, lot of coverage of IBM. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you, thank you very great. much. Okay, so first question, why the change? IBM poached you, were you solicited, did you leave on your own, what's the deal? So, uh, they're gonna, they're gonna love this answer. But so all things start with going out for drinks with Jesse Proudman uh, in New York City. <laughs> we should have um, uh, and, and, and really yes, from Jesse there, uh, from, from there everything is, is history. And so so Jesse and I got to talk, and we 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 chatted a, a few times before because he's he's an awesome guy, and and he started letting me know that uh, that OpenStack uh, that that IBM is going to be doing an OpenStack public cloud, like Amazon scale. They were gonna they were gonna go after the the, the big the big guys, right, and actually actually do it. Um, and that's that's a that's a big proposition. That's a really big deal to do, and it's a thing that I think is important for OpenStack, uh, important for for all of the community. And I I want to be involved with that. I want to. Is it a moonshot or is it realistic? I mean, I you're my, obviously you're going for it, right? It's, it's totally realistic. I mean, think about the companies that that could that could do that, right? Like, it's this isn't something you're going to go get some VC to 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 go to go chase that, right? This is this is the the the, the big players that already have the the, the metal on the floor. So if you look at the soft layer acquisition. We got a whole bunch of data centers out of that. I already had a whole bunch of data centers. In fact, I'm pretty sure they got data centers in more locations than Amazon does, yeah. right? So, so once you get the, the the hang of this, you got global reach. You've got all of those things, um, and you've got a you've got a company with the with the history and the heft yeah. to 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 go and do something big. Like yeah. not to not to do it just a little bit, but to actually. And, and, you, got the, and you got the announcement from IBM about getting 90 mm -hmm. days blue. Uh, blue box yeah. on to soft layer in 90 days. Yeah. Pretty big deal. That's, okay, so that's exactly showing exactly how exactly how serious serious all this. We've we've got the the soft layer property. We've got that, and now we're now we're delivering okay. OpenStack into that for for managed okay. private. So even though I'm a bullish fan yeah. of IBM strategy, what they're yeah. doing, I got to put the skeptic hat on. Sure. The Amazon has a history, decade of, of trajectory. Sure. In the economies of scale. Yeah. If you try too fast to rush it. There's diseconomies of scale. Do you guys have totally. a blind spot there? Do you see that? Are you aware of it? And what are you guys doing to address that? I mean, so there's a there's a few things there. First of all, they, they do have 10 years of, of, uh, of experience at scale, but I'd, I'd argue the, that IBM has over 100 years of experience uh, in, in uh, technological innovation, and, and they were, they were, They've been doing this cloud thing in a in a thing called mainframes uh, for for much longer than Amazon has been a twinkle in anybody's eye. So um, that being said, you're you're exactly right. It's a it's a it's a big thing. They started off as a as an online services company and and know how to run services architecture and know how to do those sorts of things. Um, and that's that's not a thing that that you should chase. You should chase lightly. So there's a, there's a few different things. And the company's super behind. We heard Ginny's been talking publicly. We're all in on cloud. Yeah, they're uh, all Picciano in on cloud. Picciano comes on the cubes. Like, yeah. okay, we're all in on all this. Yeah, totally, totally driving that. Uh, totally driving that hard. It's it's a it's a thing that they're into. But there's there's a sort of a couple of things. Um, one, bringing in you know uh, me and, and some other folks. Uh, we just we just hired uh, uh, Jonas Jacoby. Uh, who's who's super uh, uh, super exciting? Uh, I'm going to be working with him. We're, so we're putting really smart people on on a lot of the hard problems. And actually, you know, this is what we're talking about just a little bit ago with the with a, a room of analysts. Um, uh, one of the reasons I'm excited about this for the OpenStack community is that that we're going to be able to have a tight feedback loop. You know, uh, me and the and the folks who are going to be on my team, we have history of of knowing how to work inside the OpenStack community really well. So as we find the things that are the problems at 10,000, 100,000, a million nodes, we're going to work very well with the OpenStack community on solving those. On the other hand, I, IBM it may not get as much credit as it as it should for the online properties that it that it does actually run. Like it's well, and also their history in open source. I mean, yeah. they took a bet on Linux yeah. when it was a second class citizen. Exactly. When they, IBM had a lot to lose 
betting on open source at the time. That's exactly right. And in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this wrong because I've I've only just did my IBM orientation yesterday, so I'm gonna get all the all the dates and the tales <laughs> wrong about this. But IBM's actually bet the entire company on on entirely new technology uh, before in its history. You mentioned Linux um, back in the I think it was the 30s. Uh, hang on, yeah, 30s was the depression, right? Uh, see, this is, yeah. uh, oh yeah. man, I'm in yeah. trouble. In the 30s, yeah. um, everybody else was was having having financial problems. IBM decided to double down um, and put all of its money into uh, into into the tabulating machines for, for tabulating things. Uh, right after that, after the uh, coming out of the depression, the the government had a giant need um, for for number crunching, and the only company that was that was uh, built up enough to be able to take to take the work was IBM. So they basically, during the depression, doubled down, bet all of their money on an entirely new technology front, uh, and it, it kind of paid off for them in, in giant dividends. So it's, this isn't this isn't a new this isn't a new thing for the company. They've done it they've done it before. Well, we've been uh, covering times. IBM for a couple of years with the yeah. Cube, and we we saw the initial announcement, and they and you can see the messaging was it was tight. Yeah, they've been executing on that. Blue Mix is out there. Yeah. They still got some work to do. Amazon's got Beanstalk. Blue Mix, oh, I don't sure. know if they have yet, but they'll get something going. Yeah. it's clear that IBM wants to meet Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. In the middle of the field. Yeah. The question is whose terms is the battle <laughs> gonna be on? Yeah, that's us to speculate with the media company. I think that's actually I think that's exactly right on. And that's that's one of the things that I, you know, uh, I think I've said it here before on the cube. I, I wanna make sure that what OpenStack that OpenStack isn't playing the game of chasing Amazon because there's a lot of ways in which I don't think that Amazon's designed their thing in the way that I want as a as a user. Like they've got some don't get me wrong, there's some there's some great obviously, you know, they're they're doing a they're doing a great job in a lot of ways. Um, but but I I want I want the cloud to to serve my needs as a as a user. I don't want the cloud to be an emanation of what my already existing uh, data structure infrastructure uh, needs allow me to produce. Right, and this is uh, Am Amazon's design is is there because Amazon has a, a particular economy of scale, and so what you get out of them product wise is the thing that makes the most sense um, for for them maximizing the the. Uh, the, the investment of stuff that they've got. From the OpenStack perspective, I think we can do more than that. I think we can serve a, a, a wider range of, of users, um, and I think that when we do serve a wider range of users and we actually are in service of what users need out of us, um, then, then I think that that's, that's us setting the terms of, of the argument and, and putting things on the table that make absolutely no sense for Amazon to chase, right? Like things things like the the, the OpenStack's ability to have private cloud. You think about what, what's going on with, with Blue Box and actually getting on-demand private clouds in the same data centers that we're going to be rolling out uh, you know, a global public cloud in. I mean, just think about the, the opportunities that that, that that provides for um, uh, for the for the users to define how they want to run their applications, not to have the cloud tell them how their applications have to be run, and now you've got to rewrite all your applications to fit our model. You know, well, certainly so. pure play public cloud, Amazon does well. Again, yeah. a lot of holes to fill in sure. OpenStack within the community. Jonathan yeah. was on stage this morning talking about the the quadrant yeah. niche unicorns. Uh, <laughs> I forget what the top left was, yeah. but then the winners: yeah. mass adoption, technology mm -hmm. maturity. Yeah. Virtualization, no problem. Core yeah. compute, get that. Sure. What's next? What because the stuff's moving fast up. What's maturing yeah. the fastest? Can you handicap some of the things? So I'm I'm still I'm still extremely uh, extremely bullish on uh, on on bare metal, which is uh, maybe shows my uh, I, it may not look like I'm an old gray beard, but I'm a, I'm an old I'm an old Unix gray beard. So I'm I'm still extremely excited about the fact that we're doing more and more in the in the bare metal space uh, and enabling that. Um, uh, in the in the same control plane and 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 connected into the same networking infrastructure. Those are those are kind of big deals. Um, uh, also, I can't possibly get any credit for saying, "Oh my gosh, I think containers are exciting." Because yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, oh wow, <laughs> <Hello>. big news. <laughs> yeah, um, ooh, I'm 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 so I'm so amazing. Um, but what I think is actually uh, uh, interesting there from an open stack perspective. Um, isn't let's go reinvent what's happening with containers. The containers guys are doing a great job, but if if I can hook that in again to the into the networking fabric, if I can if I can make those things run side. But it turns out some of your applications might want to run in bare metal. Some of them might want to run in VMs. Some of them uh, are are great for things like Kubernetes and 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 Docker and Cloud Foundry and things like that. N not all applications are, are made the same, and not all, most applications can't work in all three. That you got to pick the where they're where they're going to go. Um, and so I'm really excited about getting the integration between those things. So that if you if you go if you go full on Kubernetes, but you've also got this you know Oracle database, you've got to run over on a piece of bare metal iron in the in the corner. 
why not? Why wouldn't you do that? And why wouldn't you want that to work seamlessly? So I got to ask you the question. I'm yeah. asking every guest. Oh. What is the deal with hybrid cloud? Does it exist? I you use private and public. Today. You got private and public. Yeah. I mean, is that like a product? Is that like a category? Help us create this conversation there because hybrid cloud yeah. seems to be the top conversation. It's an outcome, it's, it's an environment, but is it actually a category? Is it a product? Is it a mindset, I think paradigm? It's a, I think it's a mindset and I think it's an opportunity. So, so I run a, a, with, a, with another team of people and, and actually let's give them more of the credit because I'm, you know, I'm, talking with, with you fine folks while they're off actually running something. Um, <laughs> and you're but, making uh, the job, so. Yeah, so, um, uh, but so we, we run all of, the, all of the developer infrastructure for the OpenStack uh, project on top of OpenStack. And when we say that, what we actually mean is that we're running it on top of, right now, two public OpenStack clouds uh, and one private OpenStack cloud. And then in addition to that, we have another private OpenStack cloud uh, and another public OpenStack cloud that are, that are on deck to, to, to get added into that. We run the things that we're doing across those as if it's all one set of infrastructure. So if you sort of think about it, about people uh, in their enterprise maybe have three, four data centers. You've got some different locations. Some of those may have different kit in them, right? So you may have the one where you do your uh, your, your high throughput things, you may have different characteristics, and for us, we, we get to choose what things we want to run where, or there's some things that can run anywhere, and our scheduler can just can just place those workloads any, anywhere we want to, to, to place them. So, um, so the key is moving workloads. It's, but it's, it's moving cost. workloads, it is, but I, I want to be clear what I mean when I say moving loads. There's other people who mean different things. Yeah, okay. I don't mean I'm running an app here, and all of a sudden, and it's in Texas, in Rackspace's uh, uh, data center, and I click a button, and all of a sudden, it's in Paris, in, in OVH's data center. That's not what I mean by moving workloads. I mean that, to me, creating uh, creating compute resources in any of those locations is, is all the same. I can create one here, I can create one there. Um, the private cloud that we're spinning up inside of the OpenStack infrastructure project is a cloud that is explicitly tuned for our workload. Now it has the same UI, it has the same, it has the, all the same API calls as our other clouds, but we, for it we've gone and said we have a particular workload that we know very well because it's been instrumented in our other ones and we're going to just run the services we need in this private cloud. Uh, we're not going to have any other tenants in it, so we're not fighting noisy neighbor. We get all of it, so we get a really good uh, environment, but we manage all of our resources, all of our IT resources in the same way, and we basically got a file that says, this server goes in this cloud, this server goes in this cloud, and, and these servers over here okay. go in, across these clouds. And so hierarchically, is is so, so if, if I understand you correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, so the hierarchy is, Private cloud and public cloud are subordinate to hybrid cloud because hybrid cloud is ultimately everything. Hybrid cloud is everything. You want you want the freedom as as a person running an application, as a person running an IT organization, to understand your workload, to understand your application, to understand its needs, and to be able to to utilize the resources that you've got in in the way that makes the most sense for those things. Again, this is back to the Amazon thing. I don't want to say I want to rewrite all of my things so they make sense on a public cloud. Some apps yeah. don't make any sense that way. Yeah. And and yeah. you shouldn't need to rewrite your thing. You should have the free the, the infrastructure should give you the freedom to run the apps you need to run, and that's and we're asking and this question because yeah. it's a conversation we want to have because the definition has been been kicked around, it's been mangled all over the place, and more importantly, it's like distributed computing. You can't, I and mean, that's the concept. Yeah, but the outcome of that is deployed infrastructure, yeah. stuff was running, no, on, stuff's I, being managed. I, I went to the store I mean, the other day and I bought some distributed computing. It was, yeah, it was like, fantastic. You I'm know? the leader in distributed yeah. computing. Well, what, is that a category? Who's yeah. the vendor? So yeah. again, separate vendors yeah. and products yeah. and talk about environment. Yeah. That seems to be what hybrids. Is that's, that? that's what it is to me. And, and one, of, one of the promises um, that, that I see in OpenStack is that in addition to, to that mindset, um, it, it should be possible to mix and match vendors. Like this, this is one of the one of the you know one of the, the great things here. There's absolutely no reason. Um, and, and in fact, the public clouds that we're currently using on on deck, uh, there's there's Rackspaces uh, and HPs, which I don't know if you know, but those are two different companies. Yeah. Um, we have a we have a, a, a team at, at Red Hat running one of the private clouds that we use. That's a different company. We have OVH uh, spinning up resources, and we're getting we're going to be getting resources from from IBM. So like those are all, and we can we can yeah. still spread our apps across that. That's so fantastic. So why can't Amazon just say, we have hybrid cloud, and put Amazon inside they the company? They can say anything they want to. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I challenge you to tell Jeff Bezos no on that, on that subject. Well, the CIA is a private cloud in Amazon, so it's kind of like. It's, but that's a, that, is, that is a, uh, so two things. A, that is a, a, a private cloud in Amazon. 
I, I heard that the that the effort and financials on that didn't work out quite as well as as they as the Amazon folks might have wanted for that effort. Uh, and of course, I don't actually know anything because it turns out I am neither in the CIA nor Amazon. But you're hearing but rumblings. I'm, I'm hearing rumblings, and I didn't, I, as I understand it, that isn't really a. If you think about what their core competency is, right? Amazon makes a profit on on the on the sale of a 25 cent, uh, you know, used novel, right? They can they can turn profit on that. Doing lots of custom bespoke work for a large vendor, that's not their core competency. That's not what they do. That's not where their margins go. That's not where any of those things go. So they can they can chase that, but why? Why would they chase that? What possible good does it do them uh, to, to do that? That's them Well, charting. maybe their customers are asking them. Maybe their customers are asking them. Um, so but, we'll see. But I mean, so the thing is, if their customers are asking them, and you want to talk about companies that can that can deliver large scale custom bespoke solutions for 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 large enterprise customers, you might want to go to a vendor who's actually yeah. good at that. Yeah, Monty, it's great to hear from you. Great to get the data and the insight. Certainly, as a technologist, a great insight. And the competitive strategy in the landscape of between the, the opportunities is you know like moving the goalposts in the game. So we'll see. <laughs> it's fun to cover. I got to tell you, it's been uh, great. Excellent. As great. long as we can provide you fun, this is basically. <laughs> well, basically I mean, for. People are tooling up. People are changing. So this real yeah. work being done. Wealth is being created. Customers are deploying new solutions. So it's very relevant. So yeah. appreciate the insight. Uh, Monty Taylor now with IBM, Cube alum, friend of ours. Great to have you on theCUBE. We'll be back with more live in Silicon Valley after this short break.